What is going on YouTube? Joe here with Color Nation Media and welcome back to another live Pokemon X and Y Wi-Fi battle against a subscriber slash follower on Twitter. Today we're going up against Kovu and I apologize if I'm mispronouncing that, uh, but he contacted, bleh, contacted me. I can't even say the word contacting these days. Uh, he contacted me on Twitter, said, hey, you want a battle? And I was looking for one more before uh, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire drop. But uh, by the time you watch this, the game may already be out. Uh, just know that this is the last one that I'm recording before transitioning into the new game. So if you're wondering about that, there you go. We're having a mixed tier battle today, bringing the same team as last time. This is the third time in a row I'm using this team, I know. Um, but I didn't want to make a whole new team just for this one specific battle. So that's what we're doing. We have our uh, Choice Scarfed or Manitan. We have our Physically Defensive Salamence, which, which is a suggestion from you guys, as well as the Specially Defensive Umbreon. Uh, then we have Physically Defensive, Hazard Setting, uh, Pharisee there with just Spikes, of course. And then we have Life Orb, Electabuzz, and Corphish with an Eevee Light and Swords Dance, and that's always a lot of fun. Uh, so just a friendly reminder as we're getting started today, if you guys haven't done so already, and you would like to show some support to the channel and the series and all that fun stuff, it only takes a couple seconds to click that thumbs up button right below this video. Uh, it does help out when you guys do that. That's why I bother you with this whole spiel at the beginning of every single video, but I'm grateful that you guys uh, do take the time to share your support, both on the likes and in the comment section below. Uh, you guys leave some great suggestions down there to help me get better and uh, some good suggestions for Pokemon so that I can you know, include you guys a little bit and bring some things that you like to see. And uh, so, here we go. Uh, Rapidash, Vaporeon, Drudagon, Spritzy, which is really cool, Snorlax, and Sableye. Look at this team. Oh, man, this is so cool. Uh, now, this is actually the second time we're trying this battle. Because the first time uh, my opponent DC'd, he said that his internet crapped out, so uh, he kind of knows some of what I'm running, and I kind of know some of what he's running. So the mind games will be a little bit real in this. Um, now, I didn't see anything from him saying that he wanted to recreate the battle. We were well along. We were over 20 minutes into the match when it DC'd. So I don't think recreating it makes a lot of sense because there's way too much going on. So uh, he is starting off with a Sableye again. Though. That's what he started off with last time. I had started off with Darmanitan and then went for EQ predicting Rapidash to come in and I killed it in one hit. Uh, that's not going to happen this time, obviously. So, uh, But I can't start off with Electabuzz. I can Volt Switch freely because um, he doesn't have any immunities to electricity. And he doesn't really have anything, I'm trying to think, only Vaporeon I think was weak to it. So you don't really need to have a just straight immunity. But he is going to switch in Giant the uh elective not the electabuzz the uh snorlax here and i saw some of its moveset it's got body slam and curse and i'm drawing a blank as to what else it's carrying but it is carrying the rocky helmet and this is the downside to dc is now you know items and things and things aren't as much of a surprise but that also adds to the mind game element to where we both you know, we're trying to figure out, okay, well now, he, since he knows that I have this, now what is he going to do? How will, will he react to that? It has, adds a whole different element of prediction um, and strategy to it, which I don't know. Some people like it, some people don't. I don't think it's a big deal either way, but uh, I do hope we get through this entire battle. I really do not want to have another DC because that was a little bit disappointing. I know he was disappointed too. So anyway, we're going for Elite Seed as he decides to switch in his Unicorn, which is a great nickname for a Rapidash. So, uh, yeah. Now, most of the time, these are choice. I was not able to figure out exactly what this was last time. Uh, they typically run choice banned, although choice scarf is perfectly viable. So what I'm going to do is if he's choice banded, which is what I'm going to predict that he is, I'm going to protect here. Um, the lead C damage really doesn't do me any good, but I would like to see what he's going to lock himself into before, or first, before switching out. Because if he goes for wild charge as I switch, into Salamence, you know, I get hit with a super effective move unnecessarily. Uh, so, at least this way, I can figure out what he locks himself into, and if he locks himself into Wild Charge trying to make a prediction, I have the advantage, and I can Leech Seed while he switches, or I can try to predict what he's going to switch into. So, that will give me the momentum, essentially, is what I'm trying to say. It took me way too long to uh, figure that out, but he does go for the Wild Charge. Now, I've got uh, quite a bit of options. Did that make sense? Quite a bit of options. Quite quite a few options, I, I guess, would make more sense. I don't know. You would think that English is like my 15th language with the way I speak it sometimes, but I swear, I swear, I'm a native English speaker. 
I swear. No matter how many times I swear, it doesn't change the fact that my English is bad sometimes. Anyway, now we have a decision to make. He's locked into Wild Charge. Pretty sure. Like, I'm not completely positive, but I'm relatively sure. So, you know, I'm going to take this opportunity to set up spikes. He doesn't have any Rapid Spinners. He doesn't have any Defoggers. I want to get the, uh, the Hazard game going. As he switches in Goblin again, the uh, Sableye, I know this has Will-O-Wisp and Taunt and Knockoff. I don't know what the other move is. I'm guessing it's Recover. We didn't see it in the, the last battle. Um, so, yeah, these are just the things that are going on in my head. I know I'm just kind of babbling and rambling a lot. That's just what I do in these videos, so I know. I know if you're here and you've been here for a while, you're perfectly fine with, uh, with rambling. So, there you go. Now, is he going to go for Will-O-Wisp, is he going to go for Taunt, or is he going to go for Knockoff? All of which are perfectly viable moves to go for on a Ferroseed. I can't really do anything to him as far as damage is concerned. If he taunts me, I'm kind of screwed, because Gyro Ball will do nothing to a Sableye. So I'm going to switch into Darmani, predicting a Will-O-Wisp, and he ends up going for the Knockoff. Ah, So, there you go. Uh, our Choice Scarf is gone. But, I outspeed everything on his team except for Rapidash, so it's not that big of a deal. It's not essential that I keep my Choice Scarf, uh, because his team is very slow and very bulky. Drodagon, slow. Sableye, slow. Um, you know, what else? Snorlax, slow. Vaporeon is slow. He really only has the, um, the Rapidash that has any speed to it. So I will go ahead and go for a U-turn here. And, wow, that did more than I figured it would. Hmm, I wonder if he's offensive. That's interesting. Uh, he has Rocky Helmet. He has two Pokemon with Rocky Helmet, unless he switched the Rocky Helmet from his Snorlax to this. I was not able to figure out what item he had last time, but we got hurt by Rough Skin, and ugh, that just was not good. That was not good. But we did do some decent damage, and this thing does not have recovery. Uh, the only thing that he could possibly recover it with is if he wants to patch a Wish. Wish! said Wish. Wish from his Vaporeon. Now, uh, from that range, I do have HP Ice on Electabuzz, but I'm not positive that it'll kill. So I don't want to take that risk because I need Electabuzz to take on Vaporeon. I have nothing really that can handle it, so I can't, I can't play the risk game at this point because I will just lose myself the mash. Mash. So I'm going to go for a Wish here and see... Oh, man, something is in my throat. I think it's just... Uh, it's not that something's in my throat. My throat is just getting a little irritated. This is the 11th video that I'm recording today, and uh, I've had to have some, like, tea on and off to kind of stop my throat from getting irritated because it was, like, cracking and hurting a little bit. So, I don't know why that's the case. I usually, there's times where I record that many videos a day, but today it's having a hard time. Allergies, I guess. Anyway, he went for the power-up punch. I decided to go for the foul play because it's based off your opponent's attack stat. So, obviously, if he's going to raise his attack like that, I can uh, be free to just go for the uh, the foul play. And I am faster as well because Dredagon is slow as can be. So, he would have to go for Sucker Punch. That's his only type of priority. That, obviously, is not very effective. And uh, Umbreon saves the day there. Taking out that Drudagon, and the Wish brings us back to full health. So we got out of that unscathed. That could not really have gone any better for us if we tried. I wish that uh, Darmani didn't have to take all of that recoil, but but it is fine. All right, so Merman comes out here. That's a great nickname for a Vaporeon. Mine are usually nicknamed Mermina, but they tend to be female. I don't know why that is. I think every Vaporeon I've ever bred just ended up being female, interestingly enough. Alrighty, so, now, how are we going to deal with this? Because I can't Toxic it. I guess we're going to sacrifice Darmani at this point. There's really no reason to keep it. Um, looking at his team, Snorlax, I can't do a whole lot to. Sableye, uh, another knockoff I think would kill me. So, I I'm really not interested in keeping this around. He is going to go for the Rain Dance. So, he is Hydration. This was a 5th gen set. Uh, minus the rain dance because perma weather was a thing with Politoed running around everywhere. Um, so he probably has rest. And his item, because we didn't see lefties, I would guess that he is damp rock. So my goal here will just be to dish out as much damage as possible and let Darmani go down and then bring something else in to hopefully finish off this Vaporeon. 
and Rock Slide does so much damage. Oh my goodness. That did a lot. I know it's boosted by Sheer Force. And I was kind of hoping a little bit, a little bit inside. I may not want to admit it, but I was, there was part of me that was hoping that that was going to uh, flinch this Vaporeon. But that's just, that's a little bit much to ask for, I think. Rock Slide does not take the Vaporeon out and he decides to go for rest here. So he put up an acid armor, so he's at plus two defense. And now he'll be at full health and he'll wake up because of the hydration. Just go for Scald. So he's Rain Dance. Acid Armor, Rest, Skull. Has to be the last move. We'll go for Rock Slide again. We get a flinch. No. No. So we pulled off several Rock Slides with no flinch, but that's fine because we didn't miss. I would much rather uh, hit all the Rock Slides than get a flinch. So he finally goes for Scald to take out Darmani, and that's fine because, like I said, really, uh, there really wasn't that much use for him because the Rapid Ash is still alive, because the Snorlax with Thick Fat is still alive just it's not it, it was one of the least important pokemon on my team at this point in my estimation i will go for the volt switch here oh he survives okay i could have went for the t-bolt i really was banking on the fact that with a life orb we would have been able to take him out there if we had specs that would have been a different story but it turns out that he's going to survive and we need something to take a scald here and Umbreon does have the uh, heal bell and we're specially defensive so if he wants to burn me that's fine uh, and that would actually be possibly preferable because he might go down this turn via synchronize but nope never mind he's not gonna get the burn and that scald actually didn't do that much considering it is boosted by the rain here um, now he's gonna be able to get off another rest though or switch depending on what he thinks I'm gonna do foul play might actually take him out from there so I know Vaporeon doesn't have a high attack stat or anything, but it's just a sliver of HP, and that's really all we need it to do. But he went for Acid Armor, too. Let's throw up a Wish. Let's throw up a Wish, and he definitely has Damp Rock, because this rain has been going on forever, it seems like. He's going to switch out into his Snorlax. I think the better play may have been to rest first. Um... But maybe he was afraid of the Toxic? Is the rain ending this turn? Because I didn't even keep track of the turns. No, it's not. I think the better play there would have been to rest and then switch out because I can't really touch you as an Umbreon. I mean, I can get up a Wish, sure. But, yeah. And actually, forget everything I just said about the uh, Synchronize because he gets cured of status conditions at the end of every turn thanks to Hydration. So, yeah. The burn would not have killed him. He would just be healed. All right, now that I got that out of the way... We have Snorlax out here, who is probably going to start setting up some curses, I would guess. He has Curse, Body Slam, Counter, and something else. I know, Counter's a little bit strange, but it works well with Curse to uh, dish out some nice damage. But uh, Foul Play does a nice chunk there, because Snorlax does have a high attack stat. He goes for the Body Slam, he gets the Paralysis, we can actually... Uh, take another body slam I think before going down but remember we did get our wish up so that's gonna bring us almost back to full health with the lefties considered and the synchronize also paralyzed the uh, Snorlax I mean he's already slow as balls to begin with so I don't know how much that really helped us unless he gets fully paralyzed here which I would never hope for because I think it's kind of bogus but oh he is fully paralyzed well that stinks that stinks, because he could have gotten something up. I don't know. I don't know what he was going for. Maybe just another body slam, expecting a switch. But we are just about back up to full health here. And the question is, do I want to go for another foul play? I don't really want to take the Rocky Helmet damage. And he can't touch Ferroseed. He's got counter and body slam for attacks. Yeah, he goes for the counter there. But there's no reason for me to try to take all that damage. Snorlax has a lot of HP, so counter does a lot. Uh, at this point, I can just set up spikes. And uh, yeah, I was pretty certain he was going to switch and not just blatantly sacrifice it. He goes into the Rapidash again. He takes a little bit of damage due to the spikes, and we get what I believe is our second layer, if I'm counting correctly, which I might be. Yeah, I am. All right, we're going to go and do the same thing that we did last time. Uh, anticipating this to be choiced. 
and I will go for the protect to see and, you know, scout, basically, what he's gonna lock himself into before I make a move. He goes for the Flare Blitz. So he's locking himself into the Fire move this time around. Last time it was Wild Charge. Uh, he probably also has Mega Horn, maybe? Or Low Kick. Low Kick would be a good move to carry. Um, although it also gets Poison Jab, but I don't think that's really good coverage unless you're really trying to take out Fairies. So, with that being said, Nadia is going to finally get into the battle. I don't know if she's seen the light of day so far. But we're going to get a nice Intimidate off. We are completely physically defensive, so uh, Flare Blitz should not do very much at all. Having the Rocky Helmet here would have helped us out, but I just have lefties. So, that's a thing. He takes a little bit of recoil, but not much because he didn't do that much damage to us. Yes, that's, that's how that works. Um, all right. Let's see here. Let's see here. I We know that uh, Spritzy is going to come out here. Because he knows what this, this Salamence set is. Everybody on this channel basically knows what I do with this set. Uh, so it's not surprising anybody anymore. Uh, everybody knows exactly what all the moves are. Uh, and that's the downside to having a bunch of people watch your videos. Is that they know what you like to run. So I'm going to predict the uh, Spritzy to come out here. And I will go into Corefish. Oh, he goes into Sableye instead. Hmm. Now that is interesting. Going into Sableye maybe to try to get a Will-O-Wisp off? Or predicting me to switch? I mean, I'm not going to just go for Dragon Tail when he can switch that Spritzy in for free because I can't touch it. I can't Toxic it. I can't do anything to it. Um, so, yeah. So we have Claudino out here. Uh, I, I really don't want to get Willowed. Where do I just let him get Willow to try to get some damage off on this thing? Hmm. But he still has that Rapid Ash around. Electabuzz should be able to handle it. I would think. I guess, I guess it depends on what he's running. We still don't know if he's Choice Scarfed or not. Because... I've kind of figured out that he's probably choice, just we don't, we're not sure what exactly it is. So you know what? I'm going to predict a Will-O-Wisp here, and I'm going to go into Electabuzz because it really doesn't matter if uh, Electabuzz gets burned. It's already frail, it's not going to be taking hits, uh, and it has Life Orb, so it's it's already taking Recoil, and so, and, and it's a special attacker. That's the main point, is that it's a special attacker, so its damage output is not going to be decreased by having this burn condition. And, oh, actually, now that I think about it, it may have been smarter to go into Vapor, or not Vaporeon, yeah, that, Umbreon, to get this synchronized. Hmm. Maybe we can do that next time the Sableye comes out. We'll see how it goes. All right, so out comes Giant, which seems to be his go-to absorber of special attacks, and he may just be sacrificing it here because he takes damage due to the spikes, and the Life Orb Volt Switch from an Electabuzz does just, I think, barely take out the Snorlax. Judging by how much it did on turn one, that was about exactly how much it did there. So Electabuzz has taken quite a bit in recoil um, to the point where he definitely isn't going to take a hit. We need to keep that in mind, so we need to just come in and kill things, basically. Uh, and especially if we can get a heal bell off, that'd be good too. It's not uh, the end of the world if we don't, but we'll see what happens. I'm going to go into Barbara. He is going to get the initiative. He gets to see which Pokemon I go into before he makes his decision, because that's how Volt Switch and U-Turn work. And I'm guessing... Oh, I was going to say Rapidash would come back out here. But he opts to go back into the Sableye. Um, so we're about 17 minutes deep here, uh, my opponent has lost two Pokemon, we've lost one, and Electabuzz has taken some damage. Our team, for the most part, is in good shape, our defensive core is still there, and somehow, Pharisee, despite coming in and out of battle several times, is still at full HP. It's not something that happens very often, but we've, uh, I, I feel pretty confident so far. And we have two layers of spikes up, he doesn't have any way to remove it, he does go for the knockoff here. Which is unfortunate, especially because he gets a critical hit. So it does some decent damage. Uh, but he is going to get hurt by the Iron Barbs. Our Eviolite is now gone, which means attacks are going to be doing more damage. Which stinks. But we did get Elite Seed off, so that's good. Uh, we can always we can always protect here. But 
The reason that I have Protect usually is to just whittle opponents down. It doesn't really work with Pokemon that have Recovery, especially ones that have Priority Recovery like Sableye does. Um, and the Protect came in handy to scout for uh, choice users like Rapidash to, you know, see what move they're going to lock themselves into before making a decision. But anyway, we're going to go into Electabuzz here. I'm not really afraid of you. I f yeah, I figured the will o -Wisp would be coming because he already went for the knockoff. Uh, the only other thing he could possibly do there would be taunt. I, you know, he's not going to recover um, with that much HP remaining. He was at like 75% at the beginning of the turn. And the Leech Seed recovery kind of just negates the burn damage that we took that turn. So that actually kind of worked in our favor there. And at this point, uh, we could just Volt Switch, but you know what? I'm going to T-Ball. I'm going to try to get rid of this thing. He is going to switch, though. What do you have to come in on this? Merman? That is just going to die to the spikes. So we're going to take a turn of burn damage here. The, the good part about this is that we're not taking Life Orb damage this turn. So that recoil is not going to stack because, obviously, there's no target for our T-Bolt. Poor Merman the Vaporeon. See, and that's where um, resting earlier on in the match would have helped him because that before I would have been at full health. I don't know if it would have taken that T-Bolt after spikes. Uh, it definitely wouldn't have taken two, but you would have had some extra recoil rack up on Electabuzz, which could have been helpful down the stretch, especially if I was unable to pass a wish into it. So you never know. You never know. You know, every... Every move, really, in every turn could change the entire outcome of a battle. You can play perfect for, you know, 40 turns and then make one mistake and lose the match. Just, just That's the nature of Pokemon. There's not always a lot of margin for error. Alright, so Salamence is coming back out here. I'm not afraid of this Rapidash at all. As long as I have Salamence here, we're in good shape. He goes for the Morning Sun. Now that is interesting. Morning Sun on a choice set. It makes me think that he could be Choice Scarf because, you know, being extra fast, getting your recovery is always helpful. But Rapidash is already fairly quick on its own. It probably is Choice Banded, just with Morning Sun. So he's going to switch here. And the Spritzy seems very attractive to switch in. He's out of Pokemon to fodder because he's got, um, he's got the Sableye, but he's not going to fodder that. He kind of needs it. Um, so I'm guessing the Spritzy is going to come out. Yep, because it does resist my stab, so if I wanted to go for Dragon Tail, that would not work, obviously. I really love the fact that you uh, brought a Spritzy to begin with. That's pretty darn cool. That's really cool. I like seeing uh, not fully evolved Pokemon in mixed tier matches. Any tier, really. Bring not fully evolved Pokemon. It, it tests your skill level a little bit, if you can make them work. Uh, but anyway, we threw up a Wish, which is good. And we have a couple of options here. We can pass a Wish into Barbara, which... I mean, she's already kind of at high health, so I'm going to take a little bit of a risk and say I think we can survive a Moonblast unboosted from a Spritzy from about half health. And he opts to go for the Calm Mind, so we're going to get back up to full health here. The downside is he gets up a Calm Mind, so he's at plus one special attack, plus one uh, special defense. He's probably a physically defensive spread. That's usually what is run alongside Calm Mind. Huh. So probably max HP, max um, defense, I would guess. So let's Volt Switch out of here. Because I don't want Electabuzz staying in, taking all kinds of recoil. Uh, especially because he can dish out a lot of damage to that Sableye. Thunderbolt is, it does maybe like 75%, maybe even more to Sableye. So we want to keep him around. So I'll bring in Barbara just because... You can't really do much to me, and if you want to just set up Calm Minds, I will Leech Seed you and just basically stall you out, because what do you have to hit me with? Moonblast? Your set is probably Calm Mind, Wish, Protect, Moonblast. So he's going to go for the Moonblast here. It's not very effective. We don't have our Eevee Light, so that does a solid chunk, but uh, after landing this, this Leech Seed, and going for a Protect the following turn, we definitely will be able to survive another Moonblast. And I don't think we can just straight up uh, Leech Seed stall this thing to death, but... Hmm, let's see. We can go for... 
Let's see, I could go for another layer of spikes even if I really wanted to do that. So let, let's go for that, we can take another hit. He opts to go for the Calm Mind, making a prediction. And I, he think, bleh, I think that he predicted a Protect there. But it wasn't going to do that because that was the obvious play. I toyed with it for a minute, but I decided, you know what? Uh, he's probably going to try to set up some more or just straight up attack me, neither of which really scares me too much. So there we go. We get more lead seed recovery. We're up over 100 HP, but he did boost again here. Now, I think we can take one more hit. So, Gyro Ball might be a good choice here. It's not going to do much because Spritzy is almost as slow as Ferroseed is. Uh, their base speeds are just ridiculously low. But it is super effective. And every little bit of damage counts. So, let's go for it. We'll go for the Gyro Ball. Alright, he's going for Moonblast. And we're going to hang on with 21 HP. Here comes the Gyro Ball. We'll see how much this does. I'm not expecting much. Uh, that actually did a little bit more than I figured, and Lead Seed is going to finish off the Spritzy, so Ferro Seed taking care of business here, that's what I like to see. He's down to uh, Sableye and Rapidash, I believe, as his remaining two Pokemon. Uh, if we, as long as we keep Nadia around, he cannot take out, um, he cannot take out, what, what am I trying to say? As long as we keep Naughty around, Rapidash is kind of neutered. That's basically what I was trying to say, but I could not make a sentence with the correct words because I don't know why, I just have it. So, hmm. I'm going to predict another Will-O-Wisp. We'll go into Electabuzz. If he wants to go for the knockoff, so be it. I can take it. I mean, probably not well, but I can take it. It is a stab move. Wow, that did a lot of damage. That's not even a critical hit. Sheesh. Electabuzz, you need to uh, beef up a little bit. I know you don't have Eevee Light, but seriously. Uh, at least we're not going to take damage. Trying to, you know, dish out damage, I should say. Uh, but anyway, he's going to go for the recover here as we Volt Switch out. I don't want to stay in because I can't kill you from full health with a T-Ball, I don't think. Uh, no, it would be close, but I don't think I can. And Burn would obviously just kill me off. So, at this point, um, we can just send in Claudino, and if he wants to burn me, I, I have that safety net with Umbreon, because uh, neither one of his Pokemon can take me out in one hit, unless he has Megahorn on that Rapidash. Uh, but we've seen Flare Blitz, Wild Charge, and Morning Sun. I don't know if we saw... Did we see Wild Charge? Yeah, we did. So we saw all three of those moves. He only has one more. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. Will-O-Wisp is coming our way, but like I said, I have that safety net with Umbreon being able to come in and heal Bell. We're going to go for the Crab Hammer, see how much that does. Adaptability, oh, he just barely hangs on. And he can, he can stall us. The Sableye is, this is why a lot of people don't like Sableye, because it's just an annoying Pokemon to face. It's good. It is very good. But I'm going to go for the knockoff here. He's going to recover. That's fine. And I just, I want to get rid of the lefties recovery. That extra recovery that he's getting every turn is a problem. So every little bit helps. Now, do we need Claudino to take out the Rapidash? I mean, like I said, as long as we have uh, Salamence, we should be fine. But I'm going to go into Barber here. We don't need it for anything. We'll make him just go for knockoff and take Iron Barb's damage just to whittle him down a little bit. If he wants to, you know, um, if he wants to try to recover, I will seed him and then he'll have to switch and then possibly sacrifice his Rapidash, neither of which is really a good situation for him. He opts to just go for a second knockoff, which is his only attacking move to take out Ferroseed. He took two turns worth of Iron Barb's damage, and now we can go with, in with Electabuzz, and I think, even if it recovers, that a T-Bolt will kill. It'll be close because we lost our Life Orb, but I think we have a legitimate chance. If, if it doesn't work out that way, then it's going to be a little bit of an issue, I think. I don't know. I don't know. It would just be a long, drawn-out process, and it's a critical hit, so it's not going to matter. Uh, I'm not sure if that critical hit mattered or not. Without the life orb, like I said, it was going to be very close. So, 
he would have just had to constantly recover so I was bound to get a critical hit anyway eventually you would think but uh, now this match is all but in the books as we have four Pokemon remaining one of which has Aqua Jet and oh actually outspeed so you're definitely not choice scarf um, Poison Jab is his final move, so he's not packing the Mega Horn. Uh, that's there for, I guess, just Fairy types. Kind of surprised that I outsped there. I'm wondering if he is... Hmm, Jolly? He, maybe he was adamant. Because I'm base 105. Rapidash is either base 110 or base 105. Somewhere in that range. If, if they're both 105, then we just want to speed tie if he's jolly max speed. But anyway, we're going to let Claudino come in here and clean things up with an Aqua Jet. Rapidash goes down and uh, little Corfish gets the last lap. That's going to be a 3-0 in our favor. Thank you very much for the match, Kovu. Uh, so again, sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I had a lot of fun. Uh, this is going to be the last Wi-Fi battle before Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Or I, This might actually be going up on the channel after the game comes out. But you know what I'm trying to say. It's, it should be the last one before I transition over into that game, I think. Um, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But anyway, I uh, hope you guys enjoy. If you did, please make sure you're leaving a like rating or a comment or uh, whatever you would like to do. And I will see you all next time. But until then, game on.